Hello, Kim or Taylor. Hey, how you doing? It's just Kimberly tonight. I'm, I'm running this solo. Woo, baby. God bless your heart. Down to no planners. <laughs> Seriously. She's under the weather. Oh, it's, it's that season. I've been struggling for the last uh, two or three days, so I sure enough get it. And uh, when you were when you were talking about last week, that thing was coming on me last Thursday too. Ooh. So I have been fighting. Um, we had funerals today, and I've mm. been fighting this thing. So keep listen. Yeah, it's tough. Keep up the fight. I just want to make sure I can hear you good, and the, everything seems to be looking okay, and blah blah blah, all that stuff. I'll be wanting to do that before um, before everybody come on. Yep, that makes sense. Just to and and if I if you see me leave, my other reporter will be on. I am mentally wore out. I understand. I'm serious. The funeral today got to me. And oh, I, really? I'm sorry for your loss. Well, the the officer Walter Jenkins um, that y'all possibly been seeing on the news, he worked with me at College Park Police for twenty years. Really. And, the one that got hit out there in Rockdale. Yes, County. yes, I heard about that. So you know him. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. You too. That was my brother, and uh, that woke me out today. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, baby, baby. Yes, it is. But we keep moving because that's exactly how he would have wanted it. Yeah. And uh, we move on, but. I told her, I said, if you can jump on, jump on, and uh, I'll let her have this because I, I need, I, I want to go to bed. <laughs> yes. As soon as this is over. Yes. That's exactly where I'm going. I know, right? I know, right? I just need, I need a minute. And then one of my bishop friends, he passed. Oh, no. Yes, Kim. This has been kind of crazy around this camp, but you know, God is still faithful, you know, he, he's still faithful, and uh, we still in the land of living, we just have to go through the process. Absolutely. Go through the process, it's a process, but thank you for logging on so that I can make sure everything is tested and we're good and all that good stuff. <clears throat> so, oh, yeah, absolutely, I was working up to it, so thank you for, <laughs> this yeah. seven o'clock is rolling around quick. Yes, it does. I'm for real. <coughs> the last thing I want to do is to be trying to make sure I can hear everything and everybody and recordings are up and right. And I don't want to do that and cause no stress and delay nobody meeting. Well, it's not going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be you this time. It's not going to be you. You yes, have stuff up and ready every time. I, I, we like to keep it tight and right, but we just... I'm like, okay, don't let it be me. It's not going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> you will see. You just can't get it done. I can't do it all. No, but you can only do what you can do now. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And that's all. I know. Because I've been having people just dropping off, stroking out. <laughs> like, oh, no. For real? <laughs> Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of people passing away that I know. Yeah, the same thing, me too. And I, I work, I work part time at Dust Thornhill as the assistant uh, chaplain. And um, when I tell you, it, you know, I deal with home going funerals, death all the time. But when it's somebody close to you, it still hit different. Yeah, it don't matter. I got it two funerals it. Saturday. It don't matter. It hits differently, and. Um, my husband, he said, well, how is it? He said, you know, you got these funerals at the funeral home. They don't, I said, but you know, I, I'm detached from those. Right. But when you are attached, oh my. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, yeah. It is. Let me see. I had to get a couple things together, so I'm going to move a second. I'm going back on mute. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Stacy. Hi. Oh, Karen, you made it. Right. I'm here. Praise Jesus. 
Kimberly, that's Karen. I know you've met her before, right? Yeah. Hi, Karen. Yes. Hi. Yep, she's Hello, Miss Kimberly. Yeah. How you doing? Doing good. I'm gonna let you work. I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself as well. All right. I'm gonna um okay. I'm gonna email you the agenda so you'll have case numbers and you can do your on the fly uh gigs. I'll okay. say that right now. All right, no problem. You look cute too. Negative. Get ready to turn this camera off immediately. Right. I had a one o'clock deposition. I had no time, zero time. <laughs> well, you have zero time. I appreciate you. I'm sending no it problem. now. Send it now. No problem. All right, mama.
Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I am here, and I just moved my computer just so that I can have a better setup. Um, it looks like we have 14 participants on. I just need to make sure we have enough commissioners to get started. Um, this. Okay, and let's see here, we have one, two, six, two, Do we just have, as it relates to commissioners, just um, Commissioner McKnight, Commissioner Lovett, and myself, is that all that we have thus far? It looks like Will, Commissioner Miller is on. Okay, because um, I don't see them in, okay, so maybe in attendees. Um, I see Miller, I see Fields. Uh, uh, that would be enough for us to get started. Okay, excellent. I see them as activities. Um, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am Sean Atkins from the East Planning and Zoning Commission. At this time, I'd like to call our regular scheduled meeting for the date of May 19th, 2022 order. Staff, would you please sound roll call to establish a quorum? <clears throat> Commissioner Mark Fields. Present. Commissioner Patricia Lovett. Present. Commissioner Greg Van. Commissioner William Miller. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Joel Presley. I'm here. Okay, that is um, Commissioner Fan, who just said, I am here. Thank so, you. I have it rotated. Commissioner okay. William Bryant. Present. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Joseph Fields. Commissioner Legina McKnight. Present. Present. Oh. Chairman, you have a quorum. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> did not call for me, but just to the oh, I apologize. Um, I was wanting to do you last, and so I skipped over your name. Uh, Chairman Atkins. Present. Thank you. Six. Okay, we have six. All right. Um, commissioners, at this time, um, we will have a moment of silence. So if you would all please just join me in a moment of silence. And as we take this moment of silence, please, let's just remember the lives that we have recently lost due to the sens senseless um, gun violence in Buffalo and for other lives around the world. Thank you. Um, commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to adopt our agenda as presented. Motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Bryant, that we adopt our agenda as presented. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. Commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve our March 17, 2020 meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that we approve our March 17 meeting minutes. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Our March 17, 2020 meeting minutes are approved. Um, as it relates to old business, um, we've got the William Ham Corridor study. Is there anything else that we need to do with the William Ham Corridor, the Willingham Corridor study this evening? There's nothing that you need to do. I think that the request was for the consultant to come back and give a presentation at, at a regular meeting. He gave a full presentation at the work session. Um, I, um, I was not able to um, uh, confirm his attendance for tonight's meeting. Um, and what I, I may suggest is um, sending out the video link of the work session um, to the commissioners. And if um, there are any questions, maybe to reach out to the, to the consultant that way. So next time it comes, <clears throat> to the to the commission, it would be in a form of a of a vote for a recommendation from this body. Okay, so thank you so very much for that suggestion, Director Smith. I will add to that. Um, I think that it is very important. Um, this is a study that has been commissioned and it has been paid for, and these are consultants who are paid. 
Um, I will use again the example of the urban agriculture uh, document that we went through over a course of probably two meetings, which went on to win awards um, in the region. And so I think that it would be helpful for us to get the video so that any of the commissioners who would like to see that video in advance of the presentation, that would be awesome. But I am also requesting that um, the consultant return to this body for our regularly scheduled meeting in the uh, event that commissioners have any of the questions that he would be able to answer those questions in the course of this meeting before <clears throat> we take final action on this Willingham corridor study. Absolutely, sir. I will um, let him know. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, and it could be very clear to him that this body will not act on this until we do have him present so that he could engage the commissioners should there be any input or any questions about the Willingham Corridor study. Absolutely. All right, thank you. So we're gonna go on to new business commissioners. Our first case under new business is 2022 U as an umbrella dash 02 dash 01. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Mr. Chairman, in reference to item number one under new business, case number 20, 22U-002-01, the applicant is Scott Tremel. The property is located at 1669 Neely Avenue, and the applicant seeks a special use permit to convert a garage into a livable a loft area or AKA habitable accessory structure as preference in the zoning ordinance. And the case type is a special use permit. Okay. Thank you, Director Smith. Commissioners and those who are in attendance this evening, um, please note that the three cases that are before us this evening all require a uh, public hearing. At this time, I will read the rules of the public hearing. Upon finishing the reading of the rules of the public hearing, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing for our first case. As we continue to meet virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're utilizing this telemeeting platform to act upon planning and zoning cases as they come before this commission. As such, I am asking each participant other than commissioners and staff to mute their devices. Once we get to parts of the agenda that require public input, those who have notified the staff on their desire to speak will be recognized to speak. If you did not notify staff, but do desire to speak, please use the raise hand or chat function to be recognized. Public hearings before the Planning and Zoning Commission shall be conducted in accordance with Section 10 219 of the East Point Zoning Code and Development Regulations. Public hearing rules are as follows. Persons both favoring and opposing the proposed case will be provided an opportunity to address the commission. The applicant for the zoning case or the applicant's designated representative, if any, will be entitled to speak first, followed by other speakers in favor of the proposal for a total of 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Those who oppose the proposed zoning case will then be permitted to speak for a total of 15 minutes. By majority vote, the commission may increase the total time of speakers provided that each side is given the same amount of time. If there is more than one speaker for a side, the chair of the presiding officer may limit the time allotted to each individual speaker other than the zoning applicant. The zoning applicant may reserve a portion of his or her time for rebuttal. Speakers must adhere to the rules of the quorum. Prior to speaking, each speaker shall identify him or herself and state his or her current address. Each speaker shall speak only to the merits of the proposed zoning ordinance under consideration, shall address remarks only to the commission, and shall refrain from making personal attacks on any other speaker. The presiding officer may refuse a speaker the right to continue if after first being cautioned, the speaker continues to violate the rules of the quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, you, ladies and gentlemen you've heard our rules of public hearings. Commissioners, at this time, I entertain a motion to open the public hearing for 2022. You as an umbrella dash zero zero two dash. Motion. Public hearing. Um, is there a second? Is there moved by Commissioner Lovett, second by Commissioner Fan, that we open the public hearing for our first case? All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now open. Is Mr. Trimmel uh, present this evening? Mr. Trimmel. Okay. Um, are there any proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning case? Any proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning case? Hearing none and seeing none. Are there any opponents here to speak against this zoning case? Any opponents here to speak against? 
Chairman, Here. can I go through the participants in the attendee section? Absolutely, please. Thank you. Um, Ms. Julie Aaron, I am going to allow you to speak. Director Smith, I don't have any comments. Thank you so much. Sean Walker, do you have any comments? Hello, Director Smith. No, I do not at this time. Okay, thank you so much. And lastly, uh, Ms. Teresa Jones, do you have any comments? Ms. Jones, you're muted. I'm sorry. Um, I don't have any comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there a last attendee? It says Legina, but I see her on our side as well. So I'm not sure if that's who that is. Okay. It is for some reason on my computer, I'm not a panelist, but on my phone, I appear, so. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so seeing that there are no opponents and there are no proponents and the applicant is not present this evening, um, commissioners at this time, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner McKnight. It close the public hearing for case number 2022. You as an umbrella, that's 002 01. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation? <clears throat> yes, Chairman, in reference to case number 2022U-002-01, the applicant Scott Tremel, property located at 1669 Neely Avenue, case type is a special use permit. Staff is recommending that we defer this case to the next regular meeting in June, um, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, commissioners, we've heard the recommendation from staff to defer. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to accept staff's recommendation to defer to June. Okay. Uh, is that June our regularly scheduled meeting, correct? Yes. Commissioner Levitt? Oh, sorry. Our regular uh, schedule. Okay. Sorry, is there, it's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Fan, that this body um, defer this case to our regularly scheduled June meeting. Any comments, questions, or concerns? I'll have a question of staff. So uh, Director Smith, is this the, the reason that the applicant is not present this evening? Is, did the applicant know that the recommendation from staff will be to defer? The applicant did, did not know, um, he did not know. The, he was sent the, the um, login information and was made aware at the last meeting that we were gonna be meeting on this for you all to make a recommendation I'm unsure why, why he's not here, but um, yeah. Right. Um, is, are there any items that we should be aware of that um, prompted staff to recommend deferral other than the applicant not being present? Yes, the, yeah, there are some, yes, there is. Um, due to um, circumstances outside of um, our control, um, the, the, our, we're going to be hiring on two new planners next week. They're going to be starting next week. Um, we're pretty much down to no planners as of now. Um, Ms. Uh, Solomon, unfortunately, is really, got sick um, this week, and uh, we were unable to complete some of the tasks uh, dealing with the staff uh, reports and some of the research that was done. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, there is a motion to defer to our regularly scheduled June meeting, motion made by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Fan. If there are no more comments, questions, or concerns, I'll call the question. All in favor, sound aye. 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 
All opposed, all opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The motion carries. This item has been deferred to our regularly scheduled June meeting. Our next agenda item is 2022 R as in Robert Z as in Zebra dash 001 dash 03. Uh, staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Uh, yes, Chairman, in reference to item number two under new business, case number 2022 RZ-001-03, the applicant in Fontayo Olahade, and the property is located at 2538 Stone Road. The applicant is seeking to rezone the property from residential limited to medical institutional to establish a uh, psychologist's office. The case type is a rezoning. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing for 2022 R's and Robert Z as in Ziba dash 001 dash 03. Mr. Chair, motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fan, that we open the public hearing for case number 2022 R's and Robert Z as in Ziba dash 001 dash 03. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now open. Um, Dr. Ojolade? Me, sir. Okay. Um, the floor is yours. You may present your case. Is it okay if I share my screen? Uh, absolutely. Staff can give you the, cap the capacity or the capability to do that. Okay. You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Ife Taya Ojolade, and I am here to discuss the property that at 2538 Stone Road. And I want to be able to answer some of the questions that commissioners posed last week, which I think were really important questions. I also want to be able to, and actually, let me make sure. Yes, that's better. I also want to be able to point out some of the what we want to do and then some of the concerns as I've been preparing for this presentation. So I'll go through it really quickly. This is an aerial picture of the property that is in question. As you can see, it is on actually dots and stone dots and connector. And one of the important points that Commissioner Lovett pointed out last week is she was asking about parking. And so I wanted to show this um, where you can see the parking lot. It is covered by trees. So I wanted to show a, a better close up view of the parking lot that is asphalt. It goes behind the building and as you can see, wraps around the building. Here's another close up picture of the asphalt parking lot that is going up to um, the loading dock on the building. This is the front of the building, which is, even though the address is 2538 Stone Road, there's two different properties on the building. One is a residential, one is this commercial property. And so this is the one that's actually facing the stone dots and connector. This is actually the inside of the building. I showed this last week. This family has owned um, this building for 75 years. It's a company called Mortensen Woodwork and they used to sell furniture out of this side of the building. And you can see they're manufacturing furniture. And so they have two sides of the, of the building. You'll be able to see the other side in a little bit. This is actually a um, sketch of the building. So what I just showed you, quick question. Can you all see when I'm doing my cursor? Can you see that? Okay, perfect. So this is the part that I just showed you. There's another part I'll show you in a second that's on the other side. I did want to point a couple of these things out and I did um, say it before and I'm a believer of staying in my lane. I am a psychologist. I know nothing about zoning and planning. I still had these questions because this property um, is, I see it listed as a commercial property and that was how it was originally um, listed when I engaged and put the property under contract. And as I was mentioning last week, I um, started having questions um, because then I saw also the property being listed as residential. So I wanted to go in here and show you a couple of things really quick with the property. And obviously this is 
Fulton County. And I, re I recognize that sometimes properties can have different, um, the, the taxes on the property can be different than zoning issues. But I wanted to bring this up is as a larger issue. So this is again, the property, you can see um, the land use called in Fulton County um, as commercial, and then the acreage, and we'll come back to this in a second, of 2.7 acres. I also wanted to point out that the owners recently did an appeal on this property because they were, um, they were concerned um, this uh, property was looked at in terms of the commercial division of Fulton County and they, the valuation on the property was a million dollars. And obviously a three bedroom, two bathroom house with a shed in the back, even with properties going up, that would raise some questions of why the property was being valued at that level. And so going back, moving for, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Our goal in, in terms of having this property and renovating the inside, the interior of the property would be for us to have a psychology practice. We're all doctoral level adult and child psychologists and we are a National Health Service Corps site. We spent eight years right before the pandemic in downtown historic College Park and wanted to be able to move to East Point, particularly since East Point does not have a National Health Service Corps site. And that site means what it means is that everyone that works in the practice has a commitment to serving in underserved communities and living in those communities. So half of our staff actually lives in East Point. The other half of our staff lives in Southwest Atlanta. This is another thing that I just wanted to point out and show commissioners really quickly. Um, so obviously the city of East Point, if you look at this property again, the 2538 Stone Road, when we look at this is their business license for Mortensen Woodwork and the property had a shift because the father died in 2000. So it shifted to the children. And so you can see that they've maintained the business license from 2000 to present um, for this particular property. And so they've been operating this business out of there. And I just wanna, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Mortensen Woodwork, but I guarantee you, you've seen their work. This company was established in the mid 1940s, right in that building. And what, oops, let me go back. The thing I wanna point out is if you see this woodwork at the top, that is what they do in addition to manufacturing um, furniture. And on their website, they do $40 million per year of architectural woodwork. So if you've been in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, which is completely oppressive, they're the ones that actually did that woodwork. And so I would invite you to think about this building. This is the building where the, it was established. This is where they run a business out of, um, the original business out of. Look at this woodwork and look at this woodwork. So this building is sitting on a corner in East Point and it's completely dilapidated in this looking like this. And I certainly can't speak for why um, folks that do woodwork and specialize in woodwork have not taken care of this building or have not um, did any updates, done any updates to the building. But I do want to point out that is in significant disrepair. And so my um, suggestion is to be able to come in and renovate that building. So when it's sitting right here, then it's something that's beautiful and contributing to the community. Cause I lived in this community right around the corner for many years. And I actually thought the building was abandoned because it looked so bad. So looking at this really quickly, I spoke about this last week. There's um, four plots that are in the purchase of this building. So this funny shaped plot um, is the, the main plot. And this is the building that we're referencing right here. There's also a house here. And so there's this one, this, oops, I keep forgetting. Um, the rectangle, the funny shaped building, the triangle and the trapezoid, those are all in the purchase of the building. 
Um, and so then I will be next to this medical institutional right here. Want to go and take you again to Fulton County Board of Assessors. This is today. I just clicked on the link and I'm taking you there. So pointing out again, looking at um, Fulton County that the zoning here, so it says C1. So I can only assume that historically at some point this has been zoned as commercial as you look at the history and just so we're clear, it's the same parcel number, it's the same um, location address. We look down at the history of this building and then we can see this is the actual um, building that I'm referring to. It's 5,600 square feet, built in 1943 as mixed-use residential and commercial. And then also we can see that an asphalt uh, parking lot was installed in 1960. We can also look down here in terms of the class for the tax purposes of being C4. And just to point it out again on this website, so we see it having um, the label of commercial dwelling and with off street parking. I feel like there was something else that I was gonna show because I had the link, but I don't remember. So we'll skip over that. And this is just again, a close up of the off street parking in the back of the building. And this is actually what I wanted to point out. Um, so let's go to this link and then I will be done. So as you can see, this is the East Point Geo Point and let me see if I can fix the screen. There we go. If I put in, give me a second, I gotta get the parcel ID. If I put in this parcel ID, and you can see we're still at the same property, the 2538 Stone Road. I put in this parcel ID and we go down We've got a class code of C4 land acreage of 2.71. Let's go down. We can see that I'm on the East Point zoning map. And just so you can see, I, I'm gonna flip over to Fulton County and do the same search. Click on that parcel ID. And my apologies. You see the acreage at 2.7, similar. Um, again, we've got, so this is the current tax year. We've got a property class of commercial small tract, mixed residential commercial. And we can see we're still talking about the same property. As I was digging in here, and this is literally today as I was kind of messing around with this stuff because I know nothing about it. And it just made me have more questions. So I went back to the year 2000 in here. And then I look at the property class. Again, lot area is the same, but property class that says commercial lots, residential on commercial land. We're still talking about the same property. Now I want to point out something that I found was interesting. So I want to go back that we're on Fulton County go back to East Point. And now, because I was doing that with the parcel ID, if I put in the address, the 2538 Stone Road, 303, So this comes up and when I click on there, notice that this is different. This is the acreage is 1.34. The zoning is residential limited. And what I noticed here is when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's not the parcel ID and it's missing a number. And so I took this parcel ID still on East Point zoning map. And I put that parcel ID in because I wanted to see what would happen and the same original one came up. So again, the 2.74, the class code C4. So this for me brings additional questions 
Um, I went back because I told you um, I originally started this as thinking that I was buying a commercial property. And so, of course, when I found out on my own, I was like, oh, wait, this is only residential. Perhaps because I do a lot of forensic work as a psychologist, so I'm always like, okay, somebody not telling the truth. And I went in and I had my realtor and I had my attorney, they were questioning the um, owner and the owner was saying, we've never received any notice that the zoning has changed on our property. We, um, there's never been any signs, we've never had any history. And so I didn't take their word for it. Then I did an open re records request. And when I did the open records request, then it was saying that the zoning is already, um, there, there's no history of the zoning changing, but it's been RL. So for me, part of the question too is, there seems like there's a lot of history of this property being engaged as a commercial property. It is atypical, but remember this company has been here for 75 years. So we've got a lot of this history of a commercial interaction, but I can't, I don't seem to find the paper trail where the zoning was actually changed and the, the owner was notified of that change and given an opportunity to be able to um, contest that, particularly because, you know, he's, as we saw earlier, that he's actually paying commercial um, property taxes on it. So I just wanted to point those things out. Again, not trying to get out of my lane. I don't know anything about this. I'm asking questions. So to be more clear about what is going on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ojolade. Um, and uh... Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor? Any other proponents here to speak in favor? I would like to speak in favor. Um, uh, no longer an East Point resident, so I understand. Just one second. Just rest. one second. Just one second, please. Okay. So if you were here, you heard the the rules of the public hearing. So we just don't start speaking. And the reason that that is important is because there's a court reporter here and we want to make sure that all of the comments are attributed to the proper speaker. So if anyone would like to speak, if you're not visible, if you're not on um, video, and if you are not able to use the function to raise your hand, if you would first start out by saying, I would like to speak, I will then recognize you and then ask you to state your first and last name and your current address. And as a matter of fact, having said that, Dr. Ojolade, um, I would need for you, because I do not recall, and I wanna make sure that we perfect the record to state your first and last name and your current address. Yes, sir, I did not say uh, my current address. So my name is Dr. Ife Tayo Ojolade. I know that that is a mouthful. And my current address is 505 Angler Court in Atlanta, Georgia, 30331. Thank you. Now, are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this case? Any proponents here to speak in favor? Chairman, may I go down the list? Please. I have a Sean Walker on the line. Yes, Director Smith, that's me. I should be a panelist. I'm not sure why I'm showing up as a participant. Okay, Ms. Walker, would you like to speak to this case? Okay, let's go to the next one. I have a Teresa Jones. Ms. Jones, unmute yourself, please. Okay, let's go to the next one. And we have a raised hand. Sorry. Uh, Ms. Julie Aaron, Erin. Ms. Erin, would you um, like to, would you yes. like to speak to this case? Yes, I would. Are you uh, a proponent or an opponent? A proponent. Okay, please you have the floor. State your first and last name and your current address. My first name is Julie. My last name is Erring. Um, my current address is 1626 Rogers Avenue Southwest, 
Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm a former East Point resident and um, I am very much in favor of those who are working to make dilapidated buildings useful, serve useful purposes in East Point. So I'm in favor of the applicant who wants to fix up this building and use it to provide a service that's needed in East Point. Thank you, Ms. Ehring. Are there any other proponents here? You may lower your hand, Ms. Ehring. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this case? Any other <coughs> proponents here to speak in favor? We have a raised hand from Ms. Teresa Jones. Okay, Ms. Jones. Yes, um, I was um, not able to get unmuted quickly enough previously, but I also am in favor of- Ms. Jones, please that. state your, Ms. Jones, please oh, state sorry. your first and last name and your current address. Teresa Jones, 2924 Arlington Road, East Point. You have the floor. I am in favor of this practice coming to East Point for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, that building is horrible, and if she's going to bring in a, 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 a practice that can update that building and provide a service that is sorely needed in the area, then I am in total favor and very happy that she would, would be moving here. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. Are there any other proponents here? You may lower your hand. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this case? Any other proponents here to speak in favor? Here in see none. Are there any opponents here to speak against this case? Any opponents here to speak against? Okay. Here in the and commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing for 2022 R as in Robert, Z as in zero, dash 001 dash 03. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Miller. Motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fan, that we close the public hearing for 2022 R as in Robert, Z as in zebra, that's 001 dash 03. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Here done, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound the recommendation? Chairman, in reference to item number two on under new business, case number 2022 RZ-001-03, the applicant, Mrs. Alahade, location, property located at 2538 Stone Road. The applicant is seeking a rezoning from RL Residential Limited to medical institutional to, to establish a psychologist's office. Um, the case type is a rezoning. Staff is recommending that this case, uh, that this case be deferred um, for several reasons. Um, the first reason is um, in reference to the, um, the parcels that the applicant mentioned were a part of the sale. Um, we really need to work with her in order to see if um, there's any room uh, for her to, to consider possibly combining those lots as part of the rezoning. And we want to discuss that with her prior to making a, a recommendation. And so, um, because this property is, act, it actually has a, um, a comprehensive planning designation that is not compatible with what she's asking for. Um, and so we just want to make sure that we can figure out any way possible um, where staff would be able to make a, a favorable recommendation that makes sense based on sound planning practices. And uh, we need some time in order to work that out with the applicant, uh, along with the other reasons of um, the staff report not being complete, but um, due to our staffing issues that are also outside of our control. Thank you. Um, commissioners, we've heard from the applicant and we've heard from several proponents regarding this zoning matter. At this time, I want to make a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we accept 
staff's recommendation to defer the item to the June uh, regular scheduled meeting. Okay, is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that this body defers case number 2022, R as in Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001 03 to our regularly scheduled June meeting. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none and seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor sound. Uh, Commissioner Mark Fields. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, will we be able to ask, I, I have a couple of questions just for, for understanding. And um, so if this, this parcel has these different pieces to it, would you be rezoning the in all four parcels or just the one piece? Secondly, does that set a precedent for a business inside of a residential? And uh, thirdly, would that then be able to come back to be able to, um, let's say, house people on that in that business? So I, I wasn't sure if this is the right time to ask the question or not, but I just wanted to better understand that. No, that is that is completely fine. We have a motion and the motion has been seconded. And so this is the opportunity um, for discussion. And I believe that your question is directed to the applicant. Is that correct? Or uh, to, both staff? to staff and uh, mainly to staff, uh, because if the applicant were to come back in two or three years and say, I want to expand again, does that already give that uh, business the ability to Yes. have residential. Uh, Commissioner Fields, that's a, that's a great question, <laughs> which is why we wanted to have more time to work with the applicant to see what the complete intent of their, their plan for the property, because it, it appears to be a really significant property that has a lot of land associated with it. So we, we would like to discuss all of those options with, with the applicant, um, because there, there are various um, options that could be taken since it's dealing with four different parcels. Um, there could be options to just combine two. There could be options to just combine one. Um, but what the staff is most interested in is, is not um, setting a precedent or recommended approval on a, on a property where it would, would potentially be seen as spot zoning um, within uh, properties completely surrounded by residential limited property. So that's a concern for us. And there is a path to where that doesn't happen if the properties are somehow combined and attached to the already uh, MI wow. property that's, that's just adjacent to there. So there, there's, there's some, some, some scenarios that we need to, to go through with, with the applicant um, and the fact that this property has been used as commercial in the past does bring merit to the continuance of that use, even though it has not been used for some time. So it's a lot for all of us to think, think about and analyze. And we just want the proper time to, to work with the applicant to see what all the options are. Thank you. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry. And it was one thing you asked about the addressing. If those parcels do have separate addresses, we would have to re-advertise and include those additional addresses in the rezoning as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I would also like to acknowledge this. Dr. Ojalati, I see you have your hand up. And once the public hearing closes, okay. Is that by error? Okay, could you lower your hand please? Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments, questions, or concerns from the commission? Commissioners, at this time, we have a motion to defer to our regularly scheduled June meeting. Motion made by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Miller. If there are no, more, if there are no other comments, questions, or concerns, I call the question. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. This agenda item 2022, R is in Robert, Z is in zebra, dash 001 dash 03 is hereby deferred to our regularly scheduled June meeting. Our next agenda item is a um, 
Test use permit with a concurrent variance is 2022U as an umbrella dash 001 04, and 2022V as in Victor, C as in Charles dash 001 04. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Yes, Chairman, in reference to item number three under new business, case number 2022U 001 04 22. Uh, 20 dash 20, excuse me, uh, case number 2022 VC 001 04. The applicant is Mike Vale and public storage. The property is located at 39, 3291, 3271, and 3261 Camp Creek Parkway. The applicant is seeking a special use permit to expand existing public storage facility with a concurrent variance for separation from other self-storage uses, parking and loading. This case type is a special use permit with a concurrent variance. Okay. Thank you. Um, commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by um, Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Bryant, that we open the public hearing for 2022U as an umbrella dash 001 dash 04 and 2022B as in Victor, C as in Charles dash 001 dash 04. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none of the ayes have it, the public hearing is now open. Before I call the applicant, I would like for the record to reflect that we have been joined by Commissioner Joseph Fields. So Ms. Ware, if you could please notate in your um, minutes that you are taking that Commissioner Joseph Fields has joined us. And at this time we'll hear from the applicant. Is that Vail? Is that Mike Vail? Is that mm -hmm. correct? Uh, Chairman, that is pronounced Mike Bailey. I'm Sean Walker, yeah. and I'm representing Mike Bailey in public storage today. That's okay. Sure. State your first and last name and your current address, Ms. Walker. Hello again. I'm Sean Walker. I work for the development team for public storage. Our corporate address is 701 Western Avenue in Glendale, California, zip code 31201. May I present your case? Yes, um, I'm here today. I'm joined with our civil engineer, Mr. Brett Buckland from Bowler Engineering. And we're here to present to you today one of our expansion projects. I'll just give you a brief overview right now of public storage, and then I'll pass it on to Mr. Buckland to walk through details of this site. But generally speaking, public storage is the world's largest owner, operator, and developer of self storage facilities. And since the 1970s, we've built a strong self-storage business just driven by life events. So whether it be good times or even the difficult times, you know, there is a need for a storage and our job is simply to help solve for that need. And um, we just wanna be a good neighbor, a good amenity for adjacent or neighboring residences, small businesses. And here in East Point, we have identified an opportunity. Um, this area has good population, strong occupancy reported for our existing properties in the area. And our data shows that there is a need to be met here for increased storage demand. So we feel our proposed development will enhance this property's appearance. We'll add newer condition storage options to the area. And um, generally speaking, we are low traffic generators and we have very minimal impact to county resources. And so, Overall, we just wanna come in here and expand and enhance our existing property by purchasing two additional parcels just to the east of us. And once we complete that expansion, just know the entire property will be secured by gates. We have ample lighting and we also have surveillance cameras to assist with security in the area. And so other than that, I'm here to answer any general questions you may have but we're very excited about this opportunity to potentially further develop here. And we hope you all look favorably upon our request. So Brett, okay. I will turn it over to you unless you'll have any additional questions. Okay. We don't do questions during the public hearing phase. Um, okay. Questions will come after the public hearing phase. So if Mr. Buckley would like to speak. Uh, the floor is his, his first and last name and current address, please. 
Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Uh, thanks, Mr. Atkins. Um, my name is Brett Buckland uh, with Bowler Engineering. Our address is 211 Perimeter Center Parkway Northeast in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, as Sean mentioned, this is an expansion of the existing public storage facility. There will be the removal of um, approximately, you know, I guess, you know, this L-shaped building right here will be removed and replaced by the three-story um, proposed uh, building here. We are requesting two variances concurrently with this use permit application. Um, those variance requests are for um, parking. Uh, you can see the required parking here is a fairly standard uh, ratio for public storage based on um, their large portfolio, as uh, Sean had mentioned. Um, and then there is also a concurrent variance request for the proximity um, to other self-storage uses. Uh, we are located, um, if I can get this measurement to work, approximately uh, 1,350 feet um, from an existing uh, facility there. But again, this is an expansion of an existing facility, so there are no um, you know, we're not really not getting any, any closer to an existing facility. We're really just expanding uh, up on our, our current facility here. Um, and then I guess I did have one question for staff and for the um, planning commission here. Um, I know that the staff report has not been completed for this project as well after speaking um, with Director Smith and um, didn't know if there were any opportunities for any um, special hearings or anything like that as uh, you all are onboarding your staff. Um, I know that there are some uh, contractual deadlines that we are trying to um, hit as closely as possible. So didn't know if that would be an option um, or um, you know what with the, uh, instead of having to defer for a full month. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, but yes, as, as Sean said, we're open to any questions that um, the commission may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Thank you, Mr. Buckland. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning matter? Any proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning matter? Hearing none and seeing none, are there any opponents here to speak against this zoning matter? Any opponents here to speak against? Hearing none and seeing none. Okay, it looks like Ms. Jones has raised her hand. Um, Ms. Jones, state your first and last name and your current address. Teresa Jones, 2924 Arlington Road, East Point, Georgia. Um, it seems like um, the general Camp Creek area, even though um, the presenter said that we're in need of more storage units, it seems like we are just overrun and I would be opposed to um, a larger building being built there. Um, I'm, I'm, I just think that we do not need additional storage. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Jones. You may lower your hand. Are there any other opponents here to speak against this zoning matter? Any other opponents here to speak against this zoning matter? Hearing none and seeing none. Um, to the applicants, um, Ms. Walker and Ms. Mr. Valet um, or Mr. Buckland, um, you would have a few minutes, your remaining minutes to respond or to rebut to uh, the opponent's comments if you so choose. Uh, yes, thank you so much. We definitely appreciate your comment. Um, I really don't have anything else to add other than just the data that we use to, to drive our business states otherwise. And we also feel like this is a great opportunity to modify and spruce up the existing property that is that is there currently. Um, I don't know, Brett, if you wanna show that on your screen again. And so as you exit off the, off the ramp, okay, never mind. So, Thank you for showing those elevations, Brett. I was just gonna show from an area where we're located. And again, to Brett's earlier point, we're not you know, adding a separate facility, we're just expanding on a new one. And right now this area is known for 
um, unconditioned units. And again, we're just trying to bring a better, newer product that can help service the community as we have found that there is a need. And so Brett, if you do wanna show those elevations again, these elevations are subject to the city of East Point approval, but this is a general idea of what the newer building uh, will look like. Um, but again, it's subject to further approval. And so we're looking into uh, different materials, um, just some architectural elements and um, some visual displays. And it's not the typical storage unit that you've seen from our brand and others from decades prior. And so hopefully this helps answer some of your concerns, um, but I'm more than happy to answer any other questions that you may have regarding the demand here. Okay, thank you, Ms. Walker. Are there any other, um, at this time, since we've heard from the applicant and from a opponent, and also the rebuttal from the applicant commissioners at this time, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Chair, motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett that we close the public hearing for case number 2022U as the number of that's 001 04. Concurrent variance at 2022B is in Victor C as in Charles at 001 04. Mm -hmm. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please have a recommendation? Chairman, in reference to under uh, in reference to new business, item number three, case number 2022U-001-04 slash 2022 VC-001-04. Mike Valet and public storage. The property is located at 3291, 3271 and 3261 Camp Creek Parkway. The applicant is seeking a special use permit to expand an existing public storage facility with a concurrent variance for separation from other storage uses, parking and loading. The case type is a special use permit and concurrent variance. Staff is recommending that we defer to the regular meeting in June. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, we've heard from the applicant and we've heard staff's recommendation. At this time, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we defer the application to the regular scheduled June meeting. Okay, is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that we defer this case to our regular scheduled June meeting. Commissioners, at this time, any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, I call the question. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. This agenda is deferred to our regularly scheduled meeting. Um, we've now come to the time in our agenda for announcements. And uh, um, staff, Director Smith, do you have any announcements? The only announcement is that we have help coming. <laughs> We're gonna be onboarding two planners next week and uh, hopefully helping us out with the backlog. And I'm not sure if you are aware or not aware, um, Mr. Austin hasn't been with us for probably two or three months now. So um, they're just working on getting our staff and up and ready and supporting you all and the rest of the citizens and community of uh, City East Point. Okay, thank you. No, I don't think that we had gotten the announcement that Mr. Austin had decided to um, seek greener pastures. So thank you for letting us know. Um, I do understand the, the bind and the crunch that would put your office in. Um, commissioners, do you have any announcements that's good for the body? Hearing none and seeing none, I don't either. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there Seven. a second? It's been motion moved by Commissioner Hill, seconded by Commissioner second. Fan, that we adjourn. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing out of us, have it. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all so very much. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Have a wonderful and very safe Memorial Holiday weekend, everyone. Thank you, Commissioner.